What's up guys, Dennis here, and this is the video that a lot of you have been waiting for. I got a lot of questions about my bandsaw, some suggestions for improvements, and I finally got time to make some of those improvements. So stick around, we're going to watch uh, some time in the shop of me putting together some new features for this bandsaw, and then I'm going to put it all back together and uh, show you every piece and how it works. So stay tuned. Alright, so here we go. So I've got it all taken apart, and this is about as far apart as I'd take it if I was going to bring it over to a friend's house or something. So you can see that the pieces, no one piece is uh, longer than 48 inches, and so it'll fit in the back of most SUVs and definitely in the back of a pickup truck or, or a large car. The first step to reassembling it is the trickiest part because it's the heaviest piece and maybe the most awkward piece. So this is the upright that uh, the carriage, if you will, that holds the main beam of the saw. As you can see, I added a measuring tape on the side. So now when I'm milling, I can better gauge the size of the boards that I'm cutting. This is a, a boat winch right here. It's the smallest winch that I could find on Amazon. And I've got some, I think this is 3 16 inch steel cable. Now, as I said, this is the most awkward part. Everything else is a lot easier. So this is the next trickiest part where I have to get the carriage bolted to the two runners that have my bearings on them. As awkward as this is, I just need to get one side done and then it'll be stable. I don't have to get it tightened up yet because I can put it on the rail first and align it before I tighten everything. All right. And still light enough where I can pick it up myself. Now that it's on the rails, I can bolt it all up and I know it'll be aligned. So if you saw my past videos, you might notice that I changed the pulleys that I have on here. Before I had some that were kind of hanging and um, every time I put slack in the wire, they'd fall down. So these ones are permanently mounted. The only catch is that I need to remove the actual uh, pulley out of the housing each time so that I can so I can get the uh, cable free. But it's not too big of a deal. All it is is just a pin and then a cotter pin. For this next part, I actually disassembled it more than I would if I was traveling, but I wanted you guys to see how it works. This is the tensioner. So this is just, uh, just a simple bar. This is square stock. Um, and uh, a lot of people have been asking about dimensions. So I think I'm gonna go through with a tape measure when I start talking about this stuff. So this is uh, uh, like five eighths, uh, three quarter, three quarter uh, square stock. And it's just a simple lever here. And same thing, I've got, a, I've got one welded up here to the, the two support uh, pieces that hold the, the engine. This is maybe, 
off the support piece, like three and a half inches or so. This whole lever is 17 inches uh, with the pulley at one end and it pivots about five and a half inches from the pulley. This is a handle I got on uh, Amazon that makes it a lot easier to use. Okay, and then I just have a spring here. I'm using nylon lock nuts everywhere I can because of the vibration. A lot of stuff can get, get loose, especially this because I don't want it super tight because I want it to be able to uh, easily move up and down. This piece here is just a simple bolt that I put a spring on the end of it. And um, this is if I ever want to disengage the tensioner. It'll hold it disengaged so that it's not pushing on the belt. So this makes it easier for when like you're starting, pull starting the engine. It'll still catch a little bit, but, um, but it won't give the full torque to the blade. Then when you're ready to engage, you just lift this up and the spring pulls this away to free it. I just realized I might not have mentioned that these are upgraded as well. So originally I had some V pulleys on here. Um, or, or V bearings or whatever, and they were a little bit too small and they kept skipping off the track. These you can get in Home Depot, I think it's like five bucks for a pair of them, and it's, um, it's for sliding doors. So it's replacement parts for sliding doors. So now we can install the engine and line it up. In case you're interested, this is a 4L490 belt. So I think that means it's 49 inches and that it's a half inch thick or wide, I think. But don't quote me. All right, now I can install the idler wheel. This is, um, this is the wheel that doesn't have power to it. It just spins, right? And uh, it's on this carriage here that's got some 45 degree surfaces and that's for sliding on and securely bolting to the beam here so this beam and I said I was going to give you some measurements it's uh, oh about three and a half by yeah three and a half by three and a half on the front I, I welded another uh, inch and a quarter square angle iron here that's flat up against the bottom. And on the back, I put a piece of angle iron that's a, a 45 for these screws to mate to. And this piece is bolted on here. And the only reason I bolted it is because I wanted to be able to take this whole carriage off if I ever wanted to make adjustments or repairs or something. Another small improvement that I made was to put a thrust bearing. This is just a piece of um, plastic to fit uh, the handle to space this bearing off a little bit so it's straight. So what, what the thrust bearing does is it removes any resistance uh, against this surface here. So I find it's a lot easier to tension up the blade. Okay, now I'm gonna install one of the more complicated pieces. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on these. Um, I'll give you a little close up here. This is my blade uh, guide. So it's, uh, some, this ball bearing gives uh, support to the back of the blade, and then this one guides the, uh, the blade so it's horizontal. This right here is the adjustment. So I can tighten down this, this bolt here and it'll put more downward pressure on the blade.
And again, this is, um, this is three quarter inch square steel and it's sitting in, um, this is called like a telescoping uh, assembly here. This is one inch square steel. Um, I don't know the exact um, thickness of the wall here um, and I'm not gonna guess, but this is plenty of room to fit in here. It's got lots of, it's got lots of play. You can see that. It's got lots of play. What, uh, what keeps it squared up is when you tighten it down, it forces it against the opposite wall in here. And this is, um, is very true to, to how this was welded. And this was welded uh, as perpendicular as I could get it to this beam. So to adjust these, I actually measure from the rail to the bottom of my blade guides and I make it so that they're, they're both uh, equal. All right, so now I'm ready to install my blade. And believe it or not, one of the safer ways to open up these blades is to just toss it. There's one catch. See, most bandsaws run in the opposite direction of mine. And so when you order blades, they have them with the teeth pointed in one direction and we need them pointed in the other direction. So I need to actually flip this whole blade. It's a little bit scary. Okay, got it. Now you probably know what's coming next. So I heard all your comments, guys, and you're completely right. I shouldn't have run this saw without a blade guard on it. So I went ahead and fabricated this up from some sheet steel that I had. And to be extra safe, I painted it yellow. I'll let you guess what the next most popular comment was. So I made a handle or a, a push beam or whatever you want to call it. But this actually solved two problems. So one, uh, I was crouching down and, and getting my hands close to the dangerous parts and uh, breaking my back. So that wasn't good. But also, I don't know if you noticed, but as I was pushing it, it had a tendency to kind of walk or wobble back and forth like this. Um, it's kind of because I use such thin uprights and the geometry of it. But with this here, it gives it extra support it, it, this way so, uh, so it doesn't rack as much. So I don't know if you can see, I'll show you. This was before, and this is after. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's not, it's not doing that racking thing as much anymore. It's actually much more solid with just this piece. And I can stand up and push it comfortably. But actually, I'd want to be on this side. So this last improvement I wasn't even going to do, but I got enough comments from you guys that I thought I'd try it out. So a lot of people said I was missing one thing on this saw, and that was lubrication. And the comments I got from you guys is, I need a water drip. So I went out and got some of this lock line stuff. And what it is, is it's like this just poseable kind of uh, line here that you can use for water or air or whatever. It's got a little nozzle on the end, and I put a, a, um, a valve that I had and a fitting here and i'm going to connect this up to some i think this is 5 sixteenths tubing and for the reservoir um, i had this this was um we use those pods for the laundry and um, so i had this container here and the only thing i could find in my shop this is a uh, a valve stem for a tire actually and it just happens to be about the right size for this tubing. Now you're watching me design this as I go. I, I actually um, just had a rough idea of how this was going to work and I haven't tried this yet, but I think what I'm going to do is, you know, let's see. I've got these magnets here from hard drives. And this might work. Let's see. 
I'm just going to zip tie them to the tubing here. Okay, if I put that, whoa, okay, all right. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So I'll get some water in there and I'll uh, open that, crack that valve open so that it's dripping. And um, I think we're ready to cut a log.